you're looking for a good time with that old guitar, you better get up in the attic with Uncle Ben and Johnny A. Hey kids and welcome to this week's installment of Weekend Wank Shop here with your good buddy Uncle Ben. Got something really cool for you guys to munch on this week. It's the intro to the song Up in the Attic by Johnny A, who is a guitar player that I first became aware of probably like, I don't know, 10 years or something ago whenever I saw him open for Steve Vai. There's kind of a weird combination seeing him open for Vai considering most of his music sounds like it could have come out during the 50s or 60s, but I really enjoyed the show. He played a cool mix of uh, jazz and blues and rock and even some kind of country sounding stuff which is what we're working on today. If you're into really cool old school guitar playing like Chet Atkins and Les Paul and other dudes like that, I definitely recommend that you give Johnny's stuff a listen sometime. He's a really sick player. This lick is mostly based around dominant seven chords and features some cool hybrid picking and some pretty expensive petticoat junction sounding chord types and stuff. So that'll give you some ideas that you can use for your own kind of blues and jazz playing. But before we dig into it, let's hear it again at stepdad speed. Of course, you can find a full tab for this week's lick on my Instagram page, so be sure to go over to Instagram and look for Ben Eller Guitars, find the tab for this week's lick and learn how to play it. Then upload a video of yourself shredding through it along with the hashtag Weekend Wank Shop. Okay, so this whole intro part is sort of in two sections. We're going to call this the first section here, sort of based around an E7 to A7 kind of sound. And the first part is this rolling, almost banjo-like kind of lick that he plays, to sort of imply an E7, A7 kind of sound. What we're gonna do to play this here is to start off with the open low E string and then hammer on to fret number four. Then we're gonna play the second fret here on the A string and then the open D. Now you'll notice that over here with my right hand, I'm playing that open D string here with my middle finger, which again makes it a little bit more banjo-like in the approach right there. You very well could go down, down, up if you wanted to, but uh, I just kinda like the extra snap that you get whenever you use your middle finger to pluck that open string. So again, open E, hammer it on to four. Second A, open D. Next for the A7 chord that goes by, just play the exact same thing, just drop down a string. So we're gonna play open A, hammering on to four. Second fret D, open G. And again, I'm hybrid picking that open G string right there. So basically what we've done so far is to play through the E7 lick, then the A7 lick. Then you do that again. So just play it E7, A7, E7, A7. And then after that, you're gonna play the open E. And then we're gonna move up to this position. What we're gonna move into here is this very expensive E9 chord. I've got the 12th fret here on the D string, that's a flat seven. The 11th fret G, that's an F sharp note, which would be a nine in this case. We're gonna have the 9th fret B string, that's a G sharp, the third of the chord. And then lastly, the 12th fret here on the high E string with the little finger, which is the root. So it's 12, 11, 9, 12. And on that chord, you just kind of strum through those four strings with this rhythm. So one more time. 
So the whole first section goes E7, A7, E7, A7, open low E, and then our strumming on the E9 chord. After he plays that through four times, he gets here to the second riff, which again is based around an E7 kind of chord tonality. This features a lot of cool tricks that you see in a lot of old school kind of country and western swing playing, namely this movement that we have right here. This is a movement from the minor third of the chord, which is a G note, to a major third of the chord, a G sharp. This is a little move that you see featured prominently all over blues and country playing these days. And again, this is all against kind of an E7 tonality. So all of the notes that we're playing here, think about how they relate back to an E chord. I'm gonna play the third fret low E string followed by the fourth fret low E. Again, that's minor third followed by major third. After this on the A string here, I'm gonna play two and five. That's the fifth and the flat seventh of the chord. And then we're gonna play that again. Followed by the open low E. So we just had this. After that, he plays this lick that kind of climbs up here. I'm gonna play the three to four on the low E again, two to five on the A again, and then on the D string here, I'm gonna play two to four. That's root nine right there, if you wanna count that. So now we got this. And then what you're gonna come down here and do is play the second fret on the G string and slide down to the first. So now you got this. Then come over here and play the second fret D string. That's the E note, the root. Two times. So after you do slide down, we just grab that root twice like that. Next, we're gonna play sort of this broken E7 chord here. All I've got held down is my first fret on my G string. That's it. Over here with the right hand, I'm playing the low E string with the pick. I'm playing the D string open with my middle finger. And I'm playing that G string that we're fretting here with my ring finger. So again, E, D, and G, that's all I'm hitting. Just like that. So this whole second section of the intro is gonna begin with our minor third, major third lick twice. Root note E. And then the climbing section. Then the E7 chord like that. Now he plays that through exactly like what I just played three times in a row. A, th a second time. Third time. And on the fourth time here, he's going to change it just a little bit. Whenever you get to the E7 chord at the end, he does this move instead. Now all that I change right there is instead of hitting E7 twice, I'm doing this little move. I'm playing the fourth fret A and the fifth fret D, and then just moving up a half step. These notes right here that you're playing here, the five on the A and the six on the D, that's exactly what's here in this position, just in a different location on the neck. So again, the fourth time through there at the very end, instead of playing this, you're just gonna play this. Fourth and fifth, fifth and sixth, just like that. So once more all together, it starts off with the E7 to A7 banjo roll sort of riff four times in a row. Second time. Third time. Fourth time. Then we move into the second section. Second time around. Third time, same stuff. And the last time, 
It's all the same, except for the very end. Right here. Now that second section does go by pretty fast. I want to talk about the picking here a little bit. Now the second section of the riff here sort of has a two note per string sort of feel. If you think about those patterns. You know, those are all kind of two note per string lines there, which makes it a perfect candidate for a Troy Grady cracking the code downwards pick slant sort of approach, which is what you'd think you would do. Because if you go down stroke, up stroke, well now it's easy to get to the next strings. It's my pick is parked here outside of the strings. Down, up, down, up. That would work really well if only that very first note that you're playing was on the downbeat, but it's not. This entire riff kind of has that swing feel to it. The note that's on the downbeat is the second note on each string. So it's a one, a two, a three, a four. So the second note on each string, not the first one, is the one on the downbeat, and in my eyes, thusly deserving of a downstroke on that second note, not the first note. So even though it seems kind of logical to play this down, up, down, up like this, I do the exact opposite. I play up, down, up, down for all of these passages here, which might seem kind of weird. But again, all that I'm doing here is I'm syncing up the picking hand to the, uh, the actual kind of metric pulse of the tune. If it's on a downbeat, I'll use a downstroke. If it's on an upbeat, I'll use an upstroke. This is one of those small things you can start thinking about that'll improve the time feel of your playing drastically. So with that in mind, that means I'm beginning each string on an upstroke and leaving the string on a downstroke, which means I need to actually play this with an upwards pick slant. So notice that I've kind of turned the pick so that the tip of the pick is pointed slightly towards the floor. This is an exaggeration. It doesn't have to be like anything crazy. But if you've just very slightly turned that pick like that and start picking that way, what will happen is your upstrokes will go towards the body of the guitar and the downstroke which is the last note on each string, will go away from the face of the guitar, which is what'll make it easy to get to the next string. So whenever I play those licks, I go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And again, notice how whenever I play with that upward pick slant, it makes it really easy for me to hop over that string and get to the next one. So yeah, you could play it all down, up, down, up if you wanted to, but for me to get the time feel, really feeling and sounding right, I have to play that with that upstroke to downstroke. I'll show you one more time here, extreme close up. Again, upward pick slant. Just makes it easier for me. So there you go guys, a cool new jazz blues kind of lick. I guess you could say this is sort of a, a blaz sort of style. Johnny's playing is really cool and made a big impression on me early on with my own playing, so hopefully you'll check that stuff out and dig it. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ben Eller Guitars. And also if you'd like to talk with me about booking some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons, be sure to drop me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com. We'll talk about rates and times and stuff. Thanks again so much for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for another sick lick next week. Cheers, guys.